Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the Free Not Woke Podcast. Yes, sir. Feel me? I'm Coda. Yes, I'm Marcus. Marcus. We known each other forever since junior high school. Way and back. We always talking shit, so we decided to get on this podcast wave yep. and just talk that deep shit. This is we just talk how we feel, we say what's on our mind, what's right. been going on in the world, mm-hmm. you know, and... We might as well share it with y'all. Why not? Why not? Real shit. So what's good, bro? I'm chilling, man. How you been, bro? I've been, I been good, you know, just living. Yeah. You know, doing my thing, working, my mm-hmm. ass off, mm-hmm. album coming soon. But how you been? You oh, right? I've been, been good, yeah, I'm good. You know, single coming this Friday. <laughs> <laughs> My son is good. When you trying to avoid, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. the, the shit actually going on in your life. But nah, everything is like, everything as good as it can be, yeah. you know? That's that's yeah. good, bro. Every day, man, every day you take steps forward, you know, and be better and just try to get through the day. And that's all you could do, bro. It's one day at a time, so. Word. Yeah, nah, bro. but this is a, we living in a crazy world nowadays, bro. Like. <laughs> Nah, like, shit is really going crazy. Like, I have talks with my homies, and I was just like, bro, like, not as, not only is everybody going through something, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. but that's a, that, that, le- that really is a sign of a bigger problem. But, like, just if you looking on the news and shit, shit is just, like, insane, bro. It's like, it seems like it's one thing after the, after the other, and then everybody has their agendas, you know, social media. Yeah, it's bro, fucking it's crazy. a lot. It's a lot to deal with, you feel me, as a person just going through. Today, I don't know if we want to talk about it. Today was a mass shooting in the train. Right, that's crazy. Yo. Sixteen people got shot right there in Brooklyn. You feel me, like? And they don't, the shooter's still at large. That's, they don't know. They don't have no details for us. For the people who commute every day, think about how they yeah. probably running crazy. The people who are already nervous, you know, on the train, this type of shit happened. Nigga had a gas mask on, some whole other shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, people got to be careful and. Stay prayed up, man. That's all I can say. Stay prayed up, man. That's nah, that's it. really wild. And look, yo, sending love to the families of everybody. And to everybody, man. You know, to the to every family that was out there. Mm-hmm. We sending love to y'all. Mm-hmm. And if y'all had, you know, friends or fam that were, you know, part of that, man, I just, you know, hope everything works out well at Word. the end of the day. Because that just shows you life is so short, bro. <clears throat> sad, like, you sad You never shit, know what bro. could happen, bro. Never like, know, bro. Don't people take going anything mad. for granted. People going mad out here, you know? Mm-hmm. But um nah, speaking of like just society and being crazy, I'm so this episode mad, yeah. this episode is about cancel culture. Facts. You know, one of the like most prevalent things in American society mm-hmm. right now, you know? It's like this shit is it's crazy and it's a social media like fad, I guess, you know, kind of situation. Yeah, you know, nowadays everything get named. Yeah. So I guess people being called out on certain shit and allegations made or just rumors happening now have a name to be called cancel culture. We're canceling this person. Right, so right, right. that's the whole thing, which is, I, I'm going to be honest, cancel culture, I'm not a big fan of a lot of that type of shit because it's like group think. You know, it's kind of become like mob mentality. If me and you start saying some shit long enough about somebody, people going to believe yeah. that shit. And it's like, I've never been a person that, Subscribe to that thinking, bro, because you never know everything until you actually know it, you know? And people be so quick to jump on this and jump on this side and take this stance. And, you know, we don't even factor in the people who may just be saying shit just to say shit. We don't factor in the other side that's quiet. You know, it's we human. We all go through shit, but we so quick to put judgment on somebody when we hear one thing you feel me and that's that's to me i'm not with that you feel me you gotta let people grow and go through shit and with the social media shit it's like nigga you better be perfect or (laughs) or not you you about to be out of here you feel me yeah Yeah. it's it's real it's like people expect you to be perfect and i realized that like everybody on social media kind of like a lot of people on social media Mm -hmm have this thing where they think that they're morally superior, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. they, like, to everybody else. And yeah. this shit is crazy. It's like, bro, like, imagine if your your life had a microscope on it, you know what I mean? Facts. But it don't. This cancel culture is about making a snap judgment, not caring about 
whoever you whoever you're talking about feelings or what they're going through and and the same this is why i don't like a lot of this shit because on the internet and nowadays we talk about mental health we talk about you know caring for one another then when something like this happens like when they want to cancel someone all of that shit is out the window right, and the right. negativity gets right you know and it but it, it it don't even matter if it's true or not bro that's, that's the crazy. thing like the instant as soon as something comes out mm -hmm. Everybody's instant thing is to be like, yo, cancel this person mm -hmm. and say as much hateful shit mm -hmm. to them as possible. Right. You know what I mean? Like it don't all that mental health shit, I mean, like you said, goes out the window. Yeah. It's like boom, I'ma make sure this nigga hates his life. Mm -hmm. I'ma make sure this motherfucker wants to kill himself. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like it's it's really mad hatred and it shows like people's true colors and society's true colors. Yeah, and it's you nasty. Know? I ain't gonna lie, it's nasty, but on some real shit, you speaking from experience. You've yeah, been yeah. through it, you know, and yeah. a lot of people ain't hear you speak on it as someone who really was in the seat of a person they want to cancel, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, for those who don't know and don't, they won't know what it's like to go through this shit, mm -hmm. I feel like you should give them some insight. No, I'll be real, like, and it's like with my story, you have to, there's so much context to it mm -hmm. that you got to start from the beginning almost, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, and that's what I realized about a lot of shit. And it made me look at everything different because it's like, yo, I, I know so little about this person's life or what they're going through mm -hmm. or what the actual situation is. And that's the thing about a story only told by one side. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? If the story, if your enemies were able to tell your story, what would they say? Mm -hmm. what, what 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 side of the story would they say? Right. Or what kind of what kind of like Picture. how would they flip it? Yeah, you know, yeah, how yeah. would they flip the narrative right. to so it could, you know, fit their agenda? So basically, I was in this relationship for a year and a half. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a toxic relationship. I told Shorty straight up. We got to a point where I was like. Just trying to be better for myself, trying to do better, mm -hmm. you know, get my mental health straight, you know, be a better person for my son. Right. And I told her, yo, I can't keep doing this if it's going to keep being toxic. Like, I'm tired of cheating, tired of you, you know, mm -hmm. doing stuff on the side mm -hmm. and us just arguing all the time and not trusting each other. I was like, basically, like, if we're not going to trust each other, then we need to be apart from each other. Facts. You know? And at first she was she was down with it. And for a couple of weeks, it was good, you know? And like after a couple of weeks, I remember I, like I was on Instagram and I saw her partying with my ex-girl, mm. you know? Mm. And so I was like, wow, like, you know, why is my current girlfriend partying that's, with my ex-girl? That's super weird. That's super Y'all was still together. We was still together. Okay. You get what I'm saying? She was my, she was still my girl. Mm. We was in my crib and well, I was <laughs> in my crib and I saw, and I saw that she was partying with my ex. So a couple of days later, I was like, yeah, I don't want to do this no more. Mm -hmm. You feel me? I was like, I don't want to, I, I can't that. do this shit. I feel that. You know? Because it's like, you, I don't trust you. Mm -hmm. You feel me? And then what's so crazy about it is a couple of days after that, she told me she was pregnant. You feel me? And a couple of days after I broke up with her, she told me that she was pregnant. Mm -hmm. So me, me, now I look at it like I'm stupid. Yeah. But me trying to be a good dude, mm -hmm. I was just like, you know what? Let's try to make it work since you pregnant or whatever. I, obviously now, I don't even believe if that was true or not, you know? We will never know. We will never know. But, nah, I went to Cali to sign off on the house that I was getting out there, and she was just like, yo, oh, you probably chilling with some bitches, or you probably cheating or whatever. Mm. And so it, that, like then and there, I was like, yeah, I don't want to do this no more mm. with you, you know? And I came back, I came back to New York a few days later, she was blowing up my phone, telling me how she wants to have an abortion, whatever. And I knew that she had had previous abortions already. So mm. I was like, yo, you don't have to do that. If right. you want to keep the baby, keep the baby. Because that shit messes yeah. with the body and right, shit. Right, right. And I know how, mu how much it affected her. So I was like, yo, you don't have to abort it. Mm -hmm. You know, you can you know, have the baby and I'll be there and I'll right. do what I have to do. And we can make it work as people. I just don't want to be with you because... Mm. This is toxic, and I don't trust you, and you don't trust me. Right. It make no sense for us to be miserable together. You know, together. Right. I'd rather just be apart and try to figure out whatever this shit is. You know, and she just got real pissed that I didn't want to be in a relationship. Mm -hmm. I was with my DJ. I was, you know, I was with Eric. Right. Shout out, me you and him was chilling on this very couch mm -hmm. in the old crib. In the old crib. You feel me? And. 
we was just talking about the situation and just talking about life and whatever. And we hear a bang at my door, boom, boom, boom. I'm like, yo. We both looked at each other like, yo, what the fuck is that? So I went to the door. <laughs> yo, so I, w- I went to the door. The I went, fuck is bro, that? I went to the door and it was her. Uh-oh. You feel me? I went to the door and it was her. The singer and, her. Huh? The singer her. <laughs> I love her. You know who the fuck I'm talking about. Her, if you it was see my, this, I love It was you. my current, it was my then girlfriend, you feel mm. me? And the one who said that she was pregnant, you feel mm, me? Okay, so, okay. so she's knocking at my door. I open the door. Eric automatically starts leaving. You know, he's like, right. starts getting his shit and starts leaving. Right. And she stays. And now me and her are having a conversation. I'm telling her, yo, shorty, I don't want to be with you because this shit toxic. She ain't know you. She, you knew she was coming. No, I didn't know she was coming. It was completely unannounced. She was blowing my phone up. Had to be like 20 minutes prior. She probably called me like seven times. Mm. I wasn't picking up because I'm having this conversation with my bro. Right. And then at the same time, I just didn't feel like arguing or right. going through it. Right. Cause she was texting me basically saying like, I don't care that she's pregnant and I don't care that she's having another abortion. Cause I was. I was telling her, yo, you don't have to have an abortion. If mm. you want to have the baby, I will support. Yeah. You know, I co-parent, will support. I will co-parent. I'll do whatever yeah. I have to do. Mm. Like, I have the text messages to prove that I was saying those things to mm. her on that day. Mm. And this is two days before she went on Twitter going crazy, mm. you know? So this is two days. Yo, bro, this is two days before she went on Twitter. Two days. Talking about I abused her. Talking about I... I don't even want to say the rest. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Talking about out, saying that I was abusing her. Yeah. You feel me? So, basically, she was hysterical, bro. She was just like, yo, I just, I don't have um, any family here. All my family is away. And, you know, like, I just don't know what I'm going to do. Because me, so me thinking that she might, like, do something dangerous mm-hmm. to herself, I told her she could stay with me. You know? I called, told her she could stay because I didn't, really didn't know what she was going to do, you know? And I'm like, I'd rather you be here with somebody than be by yourself I feel that. feeling crazy. I respect it. And so, yeah, we, we kept having conversations. I kept telling her, like, I don't want to be in a relationship if it's toxic. If you want to be with me and we together, then we're not doing this toxic shit anymore. We're not doing you hanging with my ex-girl behind my back or... I'm not cheating on you. You're not cheating on me. Right, you right, know what right, I mean? Right. We're going to really do this for real. For, yeah. And she felt like she didn't have to do anything. She felt like she didn't have to, like, I, she shouldn't have to change anything, mm. you know, about herself. You know, basically, I needed to change everything about me and just accept the shit she was giving me. You know what I mean? And I wasn't with it. So I was basically like, yo, I don't, I don't want to do this. And then the, the same day that she put out the tweets on Twitter, Mm -hmm. the same day that she wrote all those messages on Twitter and all the allegations, she was in my crib that morning. The same girl. Feel me? The same girl. She was in my crib that morning telling me that she wanted a family with me and telling me that, like, because I was asking her, I was like, yo, what do you want from me at this Mm -hmm. point? And she's like, I want my family. I want a family. I'm like, shorty, I'm willing, I will be a family with you, but you not willing to make changes. To change it. So, it's like, I'm willing to make changes. I'm here making changes for you, for, for me and for you and for everybody that I love, but she wasn't with it. So how did she, what did she do? Yeah. She went on Twitter and accused me of abusing her and all this other crazy shit. Yeah. Yo, to, every, to everybody out there, men and women, yeah. actually dealing with physical abuse yeah. and domestic violence, yeah. it's not a joke. It's not a game, yeah. you feel me? But at the same time, for every person that is physically violent Mm -hmm. and then goes online Mm -hmm. and says that somebody else was abusing them, it's like, shame on you, bro. Oh, so she was violent towards you. Oh, hell yeah. Oh, bro, she she had punched me, smacked me, punched me in the face, bro, because she found out that I was sleeping with somebody else. Yeah. You know? So it's just like, that's a... That's a common story that yeah. happens to a lot of people. I ain't gonna lie, sound regular. Yeah, like, that sounds regular. You, it don't yeah. even. It's not even something that's like yeah. crazy to you because it's it's just real. And that's I've been how you smack, punch by. A girl. I've been smacked and punched by a girl before that there I was dealing with. There you go. Oh, some real shit. And that's like that's a normal story for men. You know, it's like, and that goes to show you, like physical abuse and domestic violence. It doesn't matter when it happens. 
to a man. Mm. You know, it doesn't happen when it's by the hands of a woman. Mm. You know. Yeah. And that's what I'm saying. Like, I don't respect any person that is physically violent to somebody mm. and then tries to spin the story to yeah. make them look like they're the violent they're person. The I got te- yeah. I got text messages of her saying that she's the aggressor. You know, mm. her saying like, "I know I was the aggressor." But you should never put your hands on. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, and putting the thing is, me putting my hands on her was mm. me trying to get her away from me. Right. You know, from right. stop her from punching me. Right. Me putting my hands on you was me taking you out of my crib. Yeah. And you need some the door. sort of defense. Right. You know, to just stand there, like I said before, I've talked to a girl, whatever, and one time she just smacked me out of nowhere because she, what she said was she ain't like what I'm saying or how That's I'm joking crazy. with her, right? Yeah. Now, granted, I wasn't hurt or like, oh, shit. Right. But it's like, you just stand there and you, my mind is trained to not do anything right. to her, right. you know, because we've been taught that forever. So right. I know it's a helpless feeling. Like It's super helpless, especially when you're in your own crib. Mm-hmm. You feel me? Because the thing is, you, you feel me? You get what I'm saying. Because it's you in your crib. Yeah. You can't leave her there. Yeah. You know? It's like, you know, I've been hit by women. I've been hit by a woman at her crib. You know mm. what I did? Left. I got the fuck up and left. Yeah, walk away. You feel me? I could leave somebody else's crib. Yeah. I can't leave my crib. I got to get you out of my crib. So it's such a delicate situation. And honestly, bro, I just look at the cancel culture shit. Yeah. Like, y'all think y'all know. Y'all mm. really think y'all know. Like, to, the, to everybody out there, you really think you know some shit, but you don't know shit about these people's lives. Like... These celebrities, you don't know them. Johnny Depp got yeah. canceled. He got yeah. X'd out of movies, all this shit, just to find out Shorty was lying about being abused. Mm-hmm. Shorty was lying about him abusing her. She called the cops on me because I put her out of my crib. Because mm-hmm. I picked her up by her jacket and and like placed her outside my door. Yeah. You know, and then I threw her shoes out the door because she ain't have her shoes on. So it's just like even the audio recordings, she she, oh, she recorded audio of me just like us having arguments and shit. That's wild. And so the audio recordings that you hear, that's what you're hearing. You're hearing me literally take her by her jacket and put her outside my apartment. Mm -hmm. But she considers that assault. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And the thing about Twitter and, you know, cancel culture, it don't matter. Once she says something happened, people going to take it as, yo, that happened. Yo, it was assault. Meanwhile, I never got a call from the cops. They never showed up at my door. Like, I never been in court for this shit. Like, nothing happened with it. But people are mad, just impressionable, and people believe whatever they see on the internet. Mm -hmm. Yo, bro, I got text messages of girls hitting me up, telling me, bro, like, who is this girl, you know, Mm -hmm. trying to get me on board with this bullshit? Damn. Like... That's crazy. They was bro. contacting all my exes, trying to get them on board with, you know, this agenda. Mm. You know, to to cancel me, to make sure that I can't work, to make sure that you know I can't do what I need to do to feed my family. Yeah. And people just went along with it because that's the society we live in right now. We live in that that believe all women no matter what, yeah. even if they lying type situation. You know. Yeah. It get so, to the point you don't know because people yeah. could come out with a whole shit like that. Right. And mad people who don't know will just gonna and then they go on right. to believe every woman who says it. And we got love for every woman going through shit. Anybody going through some mm-hmm. real shit where they feel they can't get out and they feel like a victim because it's real. It happens every day. As the guy who was going through this and the one who was like publicly known because the 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 women involved. People didn't really know them. They didn't have a strong following, but you right. did. Yeah. How was your mindset? What was you going through on a daily basis? How? What was? What did your day look like? You feel me? Like, Damn. how do you? How do you move through that with your emotions? You know what I'm saying? And the people around you knowing this type of shit, but nobody knowing yeah. what you exactly going through, myself yeah. included. You know? No, I'll be real. Like, it was a struggle every day to get up out of the bed. You know, like there was times. I, w- I was having night sweats, you mm-hmm. feel me? I was, like, having, like, nightmares, mm-hmm. just, like, of people attacking me. Somebody tried to wake me up from my sleep. I would flinch as if somebody was, like, about to hit me, you know? Because it was a shock to my system. 
it's like out of nowhere, somebody just like turns your life upside down, you know? I mean, now I'm kind of way past it. I'm way better than I was a year ago. So now it's like, I know that I just got to do shit on my own. I got to figure this shit out, but that's nothing to me because I've been doing that since the beginning, you know? But yo, that shit is hard to get through. It's a lot of, it does a lot of mental damage. It does a lot of emotional damage. And people kill themselves over that shit. Yeah. You know, people are online, people are on the internet, like these trolls or whatever, literally telling me to kill myself. You feel me? Literally saying the worst shit that you could say to a person. Yeah. And they don't even know me, you know? And that's when I learned just like, these people are just not real, you know? They hate their lives, they miserable. And they need somebody, they're like a leech, you yeah. know? They're like a, a, a parasite. Yeah. They trying to kill the host, right. you know? That's it. They don't give anything to society. They just take. Yeah. You know, they just take and they want to, they really want to take your life out here. Right. And bring people down to their size. Those are some of the mur- you know? most hurt people I feel Oh, they too. super hurt, bro. They you super know? hurt. And I, shit, I send them love, bro. Miserable. They, I send them love. There's some, there's some moments where I really be upset. And then there's other moments where I just really want to send them love because it's like, you must really be hurt. You know? But... That's what cancel culture feeds on. It feeds on the negativity. Mm-hmm. And anybody trying to cancel a person, um, I don't see I don't see any good in them, you know? Mm-hmm. I don't see any good in that individual because it's like, bro, you really don't even know this person. And right. a lot of times you don't even know what the situation about. Right. You wasn't there. You don't know the two individuals. Mm-hmm. I feel like that's whoever. the dangerous part, the people who, like we started off saying, jump to conclusions, mm-hmm. make a quick judgment. People who just want to have something to say, people who just want to talk about a topic that's trending. These, This type of thinking and the way people move like that is what makes it more dangerous because you add a fuel to a fire that you don't even have to stand next to. Right, right. You don't even got to right, be right. with the fire. You just throw something and keep it pushing. And for a lot of things, that's why I wanted you to talk about being a person that mm-hmm. was actually on that side that you had to deal with people saying shit about you because people not gonna think about that they really aren't bro especially with how social media is now stories like this happen all the time you don't know what to believe you don't know who to believe you know and that's what makes it more dangerous that we have real stories and real victims and real instances where people going through shit and they never get the help because it's like oh yeah i heard you cry but Am I going to help you wipe your tears? I'm going to help you get better. I'm going to help you heal. And people never really there for that. I feel like us as a society, I don't take myself out as much as I'm not a part of that shit. Us as society need to do better at caring for the next person the way people, the way we want people to care for us. You know what I'm yeah. saying? And we too, too often we lose that and we have to do better, bro. We have to. Like, we just have to. For real, for real. Nah, that's, that's facts, man. Like, there has to be if we're gonna talk about if we're gonna talk about mental health, mm. we gotta talk about it. We gotta mm. be about it. Mm. You know, like we gotta really live about it because you know everybody is going through some shit. Yeah. You know? And understanding is necessary. Understanding is key, bro. Like, how do you just how do you cancel somebody you don't know? Mm. You know? You don't even you don't know who this person is or what they've been through right. or what they've been dealing. You don't know the person that's accusing them of whatever. You know, right. and you don't true. know what their agenda is. That's true. You know, and pe- there's a lot of triggered people out there. People see something and get triggered. Right. And then now they they want to cancel other people because of their trigger. Mm. You know, and when you're a celebrity, mm. at least for me, mm. I don't move like a celebrity. You know what I mean? Mm. I move like I'm just a homie from around the way, yeah. you know? And I always thought that was cool. Mm. But now I know better, you know? Now I know better because you you thinking like, you were always thinking. I think like I always thought. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm just a regular dude. I'm from Brooklyn. I be out here. It's whatever. Right. But then you learning that people around you thinking about you completely different. Mm-hmm. You with a you with a regular girl. Somebody you attracted to. Y'all together. Y'all go on vacations. Mm-hmm. Y'all go on dates. Y'all go on whatever. Bro, she not thinking about you the way like you know. You, just the, the you know, she she yeah. just thinking. She not thinking about you like you regular. Mm-hmm. She thinking about you like you a come up, bro. Mm-hmm. For real. And if you in a relationship that's toxic with a 
a girl that's thinking like that, yep. it's over for you. Yeah. You feel me? Because yeah. she's plotting on you. It's like you in the relationship really thinking y'all having ups and downs. You know, you really in a relationship thinking y'all having good days and bad days. Mm-hmm. When really, bro, you're being like preyed upon, bro. Like it's like she see you as like, yo, if he don't give me what I want, if I don't get what I want out of this relationship, mm-hmm. it's over for him, you know? I'm gonna make sure he go to because you know what? He's not just gonna leave me. He not gonna leave me hurting and my feelings hurt. Yeah. You know? And that's like you learn, like that's really the thinking. And a lot of people think like that, you know? And a lot of people just like they go with whatever Shorty say. If mm. she say XYZ, mm. that's what we going with. Right. You know? And you don't at the end of the day, you don't need a court case. You don't need um an arrest. You don't mm. need nothing, a warrant, nothing. It's like people will just believe whatever the fuck they hit. Mm. You know, even though, yo, bro, I got proof. You know, that's the thing. Yeah. I got proof, but I'm saving it just in case I got to go to court. Yeah. Just in case shit gets serious and these people really want to play with me. Mm. You know, or if it come back and if it comes back and I got to say, I got to really say something, yeah. then I'm going a, I'm to a do what I have to do. You know, um, I understand that people make mistakes. I understand that people say things that they don't mean out of emotion and they do things that they don't even really want to do mm. out of just, you know, an emotional outburst. And there's more that I could talk about. Yeah. I, you know, there's more that I could say. And, but I just, man, I want to move on from it just like all my fans want to move on from it. Mm. Just like all my family want to move on from it. And I think even this podcast and us doing this is like helping me heal because yeah. I'm able to, I'm able to just speak life and talk about the shit that's in my head, right. you know, these are conversations that we need to be having anyway, you know, not just on the podcast. These are conversations, and that's that's what this podcast is really about. It's like these are conversations that need to be had, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. like for for society to progress, for us to progress as people. Like we focusing on ourselves, yeah. not the world outside of us. I'm not here to judge the world, mm-hmm. you know. I'm not here to judge you and what you're doing. Like I'm here to look inward and figure out my life and figure out how I can be a better dad, how I can be a better brother, a better son, a better friend, nephew, yeah. you know, cousin, whatever. Like, that's the that's the main thing, bro. So, and I feel like that's the mission of Free Not Woke, you know? That's, that's, right. that's the Free Not Woke mission. It's like, yo, we here to better ourselves. And if people listening can, you know, look inward just as we are, yeah. Then even better. Mm-hmm. Now we all this. Now we gonna turn into a community of people that yeah. focus on ourselves and don't judge the world based on what a whole bunch of other motherfuckers are saying. We think for ourselves, you yeah. know. Free not woke. Free not woke, baby. If this shit give you some type of happiness, some type of joy, and make you smile, we could pass that to y'all. Y'all take it to somebody else. Do it to them because some I live by, and it goes to everything we saying here today. Is you gotta treat people how you wanna be treated. That's if you live by that, bro. A lot of shit gonna be easier. If you really treat someone how you would like to be treated, love yourself, it's gonna come back to you, man. And uh, you know, stay away from negativity and keep the positive high. And that's it, man. Free not woke. Free not woke. We out of here. Yes, sir. Yo, I got a single drop in on Friday. It's about to turn up. It's Good Friday. The song is called Good Friday. So check that out on Friday. All right. <laughs> Peace, y'all. Love y'all. It's free, not woke. I'm Coda. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm Marcus. Say y'all, hey. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So Peace, good. bro. Peace.